Are you looking to play Hunter in Wrath of the Lich King? Then you've come to the right place. In this video, we're going to cover the best race, talents, gear, glyphs, professions, and of course, macros for PvP in Season 5. And just so you know, this guide just gets you started. If you truly want to get a ton of ratings stupidly fast in Wrath, then you need to check out our premium courses over at Skillcapped after this video. With specialized guides at your fingertips from rank 1 players, we teach you how to master your class by showing you how to top damage, master your CC, and teaching you how to become a live lord. While everyone else is trying to slowly figure everything out themselves, you can jumpstart the process with Skillcapped, quickly putting you ahead of the competition. So much so in fact that we literally guarantee you you'll gain at least 400 rating when actively using our service. Join us today, link in the description below. Starting things off, we have the best race for both the Alliance and Horde. For the Alliance, you'll want to play either Night Elf or Dwarf. Night Elf is better overall, however it has a high skill cap due to Shadow Meld, which allows you to immune massive damage from projectiles like Chaos Bolt and Lava Burst if timed correctly. It's especially good into Hunters too, since if you Shadow Meld an aimed shot, then the MS effect will drop, making it easy for your healer to top you. Additionally, you get access to Quickness, which requires players to go over hit cap in order to never miss against you, which no one wants to do. This means players will naturally miss abilities like Blind and Kidney Shot onto you, which can turn a losing game into a winning one. Dwarf gives you access to Stone Form, which removes all poisons and bleeds. This is especially strong in the early seasons due to the fact that it's insane into rogues and ferals. A lot of their pressure comes in the form of poisons and bleeds, so if you clear a 5 point rip or multiple poisons, you'll put yourself ahead. For the Horde, you'll want to be Orc. That's because you gain access to Stun Reduction, which is especially good in the early seasons since rogues and ferals are absolutely insane due to low resilience. Additionally, you gain access to Command, which increases your pet damage, which is nice, as well as Blood Fury, which is a 2 minute offensive CD that you can combo with your Rapid Fire for Big Burst. Next up, we're going to go over the best talent setup for Hunters in PvP. What you see on screen is exactly that, and as you can see, Marksmanship Hunter is the absolute best spec. Although survival in Season 5 has better mana regeneration due to thrill of the hunt and damage in the form of explosive shot, MM is still stronger due to the CC and survivability being better, since you have readiness that resets the cooldown of deterrence, as well as silencing shot on a 20 second cooldown. Although survival does have some utility in the form of Wyvern Sting. This ability has a long cooldown and is a poison, which means that paladins, druids, and shamans can cleanse it. And as if that wasn't bad enough, it also is a sleep effect, which means a shaman can just use tremor to break it. Now let's go over some abilities, covering mainly the most noteworthy ones, starting off with focused aim. This talent brings you closer to hit cap, which is 5%. If you're above 5% hit, then you can budget points into improved concussive shot instead. If you get close to hitting Bis gear, especially the Bis eye level 226 weapon, then we recommend you to swap out survival tactics for 2 points in improved barrage. At this point improved barrage becomes more powerful as your aimed shot, which scales with weapon damage, gets a significant damage boost. Beforehand the additional crit chance on your aimed shot is just not worth it in comparison to a reduced disengage CD. Scatter shot in the survival tree is one of your best utility spells, it allows you to set up your freezing trap and can even be used as a raw peel since it's an undispellable CC. It breaks to dots though and doesn't clear them when used, so it's important to be careful and not dot targets you want to scatter. Sure-footed decreases the duration of slows and roots. This may not seem like a big deal, however it indirectly reduces the damage done by warriors and DKs since it forces them to use more globals on slowing you, which means less globals doing damage. Lock and load is mainly taken for the mana efficiency. In Season 5, hunters have mana issues, so any talent you can take that helps solve this issue is fantastic. Aimed Shot is one of your best abilities since it allows you to apply a major healing reduction effect onto your opponent with almost no downtime. Its damage scales off your weapon damage, which means it won't do much damage until you get your hands on a solid weapon. Also, since it's physical damage, you'll hit especially hard into cloth wearers and weak into plate. In contrast, Chimera Shot will always do the same damage since it's magical. Additionally, if the target has Serpent Sting on them, then you'll do 40% of the theoretical maximum damage of the Serpent Sting instantly. It synergizes with Glyph of Serpent Sting for that very reason. When used with Scorping Sting, the target will be disarmed for 10 seconds. This however can only be done once a minute, which means that you can actually perfectly time your disarm with Rogue Shadow Dance to completely negate a setup. It's important to note however that it's in the Nature School, which means it can be removed with Cloak of Shadows. This is kinda counterintuitive since it's not dispellable. 
Piercing Shot is excellent for damage and makes crit much more valuable. It's fantastic against rogues since it makes it harder for them to re-stealth or vanish. It also ticks every one second, thus breaking vanish instantly. Silencing Shot is an amazing ability that silences your target for 3 seconds on a very short cooldown. Some things to keep in mind with this ability is that it has a travel time, so you gotta be well aware of when you want to use it. It can be hard to silence a cast at max range, so make sure to check the proximity of the target prior to using it. And saving the best for last, we have Readiness, which is your core burst and survivability cooldown. It resets nearly all your CDs, which means you'll be able to do things like double trap and double silence on a setup, or even double aimed shot to apply MS on multiple targets. If a paladin were to hand a protection off the MS effect, then you could even use Readiness to reset the CD to reapply the MS effect instantly again. But more importantly, Readiness allows you to use deterrence twice as well as scatter shot. If you're being trained, being able to deter twice is so, so valuable and makes you much harder to kill. As for scatter shot, if your healer is being trained by double melee, then using scatter shot on both of them is completely insane. As for your pet, we recommend you get the crab pet due to its ability to root a target in place for a long time on a short CD, which allows you to cover your freezing traps so they don't get eaten by their teammates. Since the crab is its tenacity pet, you get access to both Roar of Sacrifice as well as Intervene. Ross allows you to completely negate all critical hits onto your target, which is an amazing counter into cooldowns like Shadow Dance, since a rogue's crit chance with ambush is nearly 100% due to the improved ambush talent. Intervene is great for preventing follow-up CC onto your teammates. A prime example of this is when your healer is in a blind, you can safely assume that they're going to be sapped off. However, if you intervene, then the pet will eat the sap. Next up, we have glyphs. There are quite a few to choose from, which can make it a bit overwhelming, so let's just dive straight in. Starting things off, we have Glyph of Aimed Shot. This glyph increases our damage output by allowing us to use Aimed Shot more frequently and therefore also gives our MS a higher uptime. That's because Aimed Shot's CD and duration are the exact same, 10 seconds. And since the ability is a projectile, this means that you'll often find your MS falling before you get to reapply it, which can be crucial. Thus, having Aimed Shot be an 8 second cooldown will result in permanent uptime on the MS effect. Glyph of Serpent Sting is your second major glyph that you absolutely need. It increases the duration of your Serpent Sting, which indirectly increases the total damage the Serpent Sting deals throughout its duration. And since Chimera Shot's damage gets amplified by the total theoretical damage Serpent Sting can deal, this glyph indirectly buffs the damage by Chimera Shot a ton. You'll absolutely want to get your hands on this one. Glyph of Snake Trap is your third major glyph of choice. This is your least important one, so if you're short on gold, buy this one last out of the three. Snake Trap is actually an extremely overpowered ability since it allows you to cover your Serpent Sting with a ton of different poisons created by the snakes as well as apply mind-numbing poison onto casters, slowing down their cast time. Its weakness, however, is that the snakes die to any AoE damage, which is why you'll want this glyph. Although the snakes will still die super fast, at the very least your opponent will have to use two AoE globals to kill them instead of just one. Now, for your minor glyphs, you'll want to get your hands on Glyph of Mend Pet ASAP. This one will save you a ton of headaches since your pet will constantly be happy, which means you won't need to feed it. This benefits you in Arena since your pet won't randomly become sad mid-game and deal less damage. Glyph of Scare Beast allows you to cast Scare Beast while taking damage. This is especially important when you're getting hit by a feral or a hunter pet, since without this glyph it can practically be impossible to get the cast off since their attack speed is so high. And finally, we have Glyph of Feign Death. This is probably your least important one, so if you're having a hard time paying your bills, don't worry about this one. It simply just allows you to feign death more often, which is nice, but nothing extraordinary. It's time to cover gear, which is the biggest stepping stone in your character's power level. Thus, knowing which pieces you want to aim for is incredibly important. We want to start things off with stat priority, since this is what dictates the items you'll want for your BIS set. You'll want to aim at getting 5% hit since the chance to miss by default is 5% in PvP. Some talents and racials like quickness and heightened senses will still cause you to miss, in which case you could technically go above 5% hit to counteract these abilities. However, that's not something we'd recommend. Resilience is one of the best stats in the game in PvP. It makes you much more durable in an incredibly bursty expansion by reducing the effectiveness and chance to be crit, as well as reducing damage taken overall by enemy players. Thus, you'll want to prioritize getting as much of it as possible. Spell Penetration Soft Cap is currently 130. This is to eliminate the resistance bonus granted by Frost Resistance Aura, thus causing your freezing trap to no longer resist against Paladins. 
However, Blizzard may implement the freezing trap bug that existed back in Wrath that made your freezing trap not benefit from your spell penetration, in which case the soft cap changes to 80. The reason behind this is that spell penetration also greatly affects your damage output against targets with nature and arcane resistances, namely mages and druids, because chimera and serpent sting deal nature damage. Agility takes higher priority over attack power due to the fact that each agility point equals 2 AP while also giving you crit. Crit has immense value due to the talent piercing shots, which causes your crits to also apply a bleed onto the target that ticks every one second. For your gems, starting off with your meta socket, you'll want to get the agility and increased crit damage gem. For reds, you'll want to use the agility resilience split gems. For blues, use spell penetration or hit spell pen splits, depending on your current stats, since you want to try and hit those breakpoints we talked about earlier. If you're already at the breakpoints, feel free to use a plus six all stat gem in its place. For yellows, you'll want to just use straight resilience gems. Now for your actual gear. We're going to start things off with the pre bis set. What you can see on screen is all the things that can be acquired before the arena season starts. Everything is either a BOE that can be purchased from the auction house, a dungeon drop from either a normal or heroic, or simply purchased with honor points. Band of the Kirin Tor can simply be purchased for 6,800 to 8,500 gold, depending on your reputation with the Kirin Tor faction, which may sound like a lot, but due to how expensive everything is on launch, you should be able to farm the gold pretty quickly. Rune Blade of Demonstrable Power is super easy to get. You need to get revered with the Knights of the Ebon Blade, which may seem hard, but it really isn't. This reputation can be grinded out in a couple of hours. For your actual full bis set, a big handful of your items come from raids. This is a blessing and a curse at the same time. On the one hand, you could get really lucky and outgear the entire arena ladder early on. On the other hand, you might get super unlucky and be behind on gear. Some items, like your tier and off pieces, are from PvP. These require raiding to purchase with arena points. A couple of BOEs can be purchased from the auction house, and as you can see, Dark Moon card is still the best trinket even in full bis, so make sure you get your hands on it ASAP. Moving along, Professions in Wrath play a huge part in your character's power level. It might hurt your wallet filled with gold, however we strongly recommend you get your hands on engineering and jewel crafting. Jewel crafting gives you the highest stat boost compared to the other options in Season 5, which comes in the form of amplified gems that you can only have three of. This is huge since normal epic gems aren't available until Season 7, making the stat difference between the normal gems and the jewel crafting exclusives that much bigger. Engineering is the most important one of the two though. This is because of the hand-mounted pyro rocket glove enchant, which acts as an additional 2 to 3k damage off the GCD on an incredibly short cooldown, making your trap CC setups that much more deadly. This is especially good in Season 5 due to the fact that it doesn't scale off anything. The damage is static, so it's obviously going to be the strongest in the arena season where players' HP pools are the lowest. And now it's time to talk about macros. Hunters can be a bit macro intensive due to pet management, so let's just dive in. Starting off light, we have a cast sequence macro that will make it incredibly easy to switch between tracking humanoids and hidden. This is important because although it's nice to just passively track hidden all day to find stealthies, you'll want to be tracking humanoids as often as possible due to improved tracking, which gives you increased damage against enemy players when tracking humanoids. Another quality of life macro is the all-in-one pet macro. If you don't currently have a pet, then it calls it out. If the pet is out, then it dismisses it, and if it's sadly dead, then you revive it. This combines three keybinds into one, which should help with opening up some more keybind slots. The following macro causes your deterrence to cancel if you press it twice. This is especially nice when you want to stay offensive while an opponent is blasting you with damage. For instance, when an Ellie Shaman is doing their Lava Burst Chain Lightning combo onto you, you just immune the combo and cancel deter. It's really handy, but takes some time to get used to. For your scatter and silencing shot, we strongly recommend you get your hands on a focus macro for these, as it makes it incredibly easy to CC without changing targets. And if you're ready to up your game, then we recommend getting your hands on the Arena 1 Two, three version. These are six separate macros which allow you to choose who you want to CC without changing targets. This is especially good in threes since there's three targets, which means simply managing your target and focus won't cut it. Master's Call, Roar of Sacrifice, and Intervene all require you to target an ally or yourself in order to cast it. Thus, using party one, two, three macros for these abilities is a must. It might get a bit keybind intensive, so if you're finding yourself being short on keybind space, then we recommend using mouse over conditions instead. 
The final macro is probably the most complicated one. Simply put, it causes your pet to growl its nearest target. This makes it super easy to growl off grounding totems, which is important when you're going for freezing traps since shamans will always try to ground them. The pet follow command in the macro is important since it causes your pet to cancel its pin channel, which you often use on your setups so players can't eat your traps. And since your crab can't growl during pin, you kinda have to cancel it in order to growl. And with that, this video comes to an end. We thank you so much for watching, and make sure to check out our in-depth Wrath Hunter videos on our website. And of course, check out Skillcapped. We are the only service that dares to literally guarantee you'll climb at least 400 plus rating when actively using our service. And if you don't, you don't pay. Simple as that. As always though, we want to thank you all for watching. See you soon.